nominate somebody very different. Either way, our view is this. Give the people a voice Excuse in me? filling No, I don't think I vacancy. will. Mr. Slade. This is such a crock Let of shit. Let me remind shit. colleagues of what Vice President Biden said when He's he was sure chairman of the Mr. Slade, Judiciary Committee here in the school, Senate. Not a barracks. Here's what he said. It would be our pragmatic conclusion that once the political is season is underway, and it is, action on a Supreme Court nomination must be put uh, on a lame duck the president election campaign and if is Ted Cruz or Donald Trump get to be president, shit. they've all asked fair us to the not nominee, to confirm said, or take up a selection shit. by President um, Obama. So this if a vacancy occurs in their last year of their first term, guess what? You will use their words against them. This is such a I want you to use my words shit. against me. No, I don't think if there's so a Republican president in 2016 shit. and a vacancy shit. occurs in the shit. last year of the first term, you can shit. say, Please Lindsey Graham said, shit. let's let the next Barry president, who it, whoever it might be, shit. make that nomination. Sims, and you could use my words shit. against me and you'd be Mr. absolutely Sims right. We're setting a precedent shit. here today, he Republicans to are, that in the last year, at least of a lame duck eight-year term, I would say it's going to be a four-year term, that you're not going to fill the vacancy of the Supreme Court based on what we're doing here today. That's going to be the new rule. When y'all change the rules about appellate judges and district court judges to get your way, I thought it was a really abuse of power. And what you have done here is you've made the caucuses, the Republican and Democratic caucuses, are now not going to have to reach across the aisle when it comes to appellate judges and district court judges to get input from us or we get input from you. So what does that mean? That we're going to pick the most hard-ass people we can... Plenary committee, that you be expelled, Mr. Sims. You are a cover-up artist, and you are a liar. But not a snitch. Excuse me? No, I don't think I will. Mr. Slade. This is such a crock of shit. Please watch your language, Mr. Slade. You are in the Barrett School, not a barracks. Mr. Sims, I will give you one final opportunity to speak up. Mr. Sims doesn't want it. He doesn't need to be labeled still worthy of being a bad man. What the hell is that? What is your motto here? Boys, inform on your classmates. Save your hide. Anything short of that, we're going to burn you at the stake? Well, gentlemen, when the shit hits the fan, some guys run and some guys stay. Here's Charlie facing the fire, and there's George hiding in Big Daddy's pocket. And what are you doing? You're going to reward George and destroy Charlie. Are you finished, Mr. Slade? No, I'm just getting warmed up. I don't know who went to this place. William Howard Taft, William Jennings Bride, William Tell, whoever. Their spirit is dead, if they ever had one. It's gone. You're building a rat ship here, a vessel for seagoing snitches. And if you think you're preparing these minnows for manhood, you better think again. Because I say you are killing the very spirit this institution proclaims it instills. What a sham. What kind of a show are you guys putting on here today? I mean, the only class in this act is sitting next to me. And I'm here to tell you, this boy's soul is intact. It's non-negotiable. You know how I know? Someone here, and I'm not going to say who, offered to buy it. Only Charlie here wasn't selling. Sir, you're out of order. Out of order? I show you out of order. You don't know what out of order is, Mr. Trask. I... Out of order. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? I've been around, you know. There was a time I could see, and I have seen, Boys like these, younger than these, their arms torn out, their legs ripped off. But there is nothing like the sight of an amputated spirit. There is no prosthetic for that. You think you're merely sending this splendid foot soldier back home to Argonne with his tail between his legs, but I say you are executing his soul. And why? Because he's not a bad man. Bad men. 
You hurt this boy, you're gonna be bad bums. The lot of you. And Harry, Jimmy, Trent, wherever you are out there, fuck you too! Stand down, Mr. Slade. I'm not finished. As I came in here, I heard those words. Cradle of leadership. Well, when the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. And it has fallen here. It has fallen. Makers of men. Creators of leaders. Be careful what kind of leaders you're producing here. I don't know if Charlie's silence here today is right or wrong. I'm not a judge or jury. But I can tell you this. He won't sell anybody out to buy his future. And that, my friends, is called integrity. That's called courage. Now that's the stuff leaders should be made of. Now I have come to the crossroads in my life. I always knew what the right path was. Without exception, I knew, but I never took it. You know why? It was too damn hard. Now, here's Charlie. He's come to the crossroads. He has chosen a path. It's the right path. It's a path made of principle that leads to character. Let him continue on his journey. You hold this boy's future in your hands, committee. It's a valuable future. Believe me, don't destroy it, protect it, embrace it. It's going to make you proud one day, I promise you.